guys, if I drop this pen, that is not me being clumsy. That is me practicing, showing y'all how gravity works. Clock that, besties, welcome back. In today's video, we are discovering things about physical sciences that we are not supposed to do in our final NSC exams so that you can secure very, very good marks in Friday. Are you guys ready? Awesome. So as we know, physical sciences, that's where it really goes down. Do you prefer paper one or paper two? I know I prefer paper one. Paper two used to throw hands. That was me and paper two. Okay, let's start with the common mistakes that learners tend to make. And the first one, exam guideline. A lot of learners do not use their exam guideline. And remember, definitions for physical sciences will only be marked correct if they come from that exam guideline. So go and download it now. Go and download that exam guideline now. If your definition is not from the exam guideline, I don't need to say a lot. I do not need to say a lot. Remember, as much as it's important for you to memorize these definitions, that's a free 20 mark for you. However, understanding them is also as much important because sometimes, actually most of the questions in that paper will be testing your application of those laws and definitions. When you're calculating in Newtons, you are applying the theory of Newton's laws. That is what you are doing. So if you do not understand it, it's going to be very difficult for you to apply it. And then another one that a lot of learners tend to struggle with, it's a vector and a scalar. Besties, vector and the scalar are not the same thing. One only has, okay, let's talk about the laws first. First, second, third, go and memorize this like your life depends on it. And remember, remember that these three laws come from the same idea, but the gravitational one is very, very important because you know that's where they're gonna catch you. That is where they're gonna catch you. I wanna tell you something. Another thing, a free body diagram. Most likely a free body diagram, they will ask you of something on an incline, and that is where they try and catch you. The number of marks tell you how many forces are supposed to be there. And your direction is gonna be very important. So for example, if there's a box and then I'm pulling it, I'm in my Bruno Mars area, you know Bruno Mars post that, I think it's his keyboard on the road. I hope I'll get that picture. You pull it, and then you push it. Yeah, you pull it towards you. Then that force is gonna be at that. Get it? Can be very important. So it is very important that you understand. If something is on an incline, do do the forces accordingly. Remember something that's on an incline? The normal force is not gonna be straight. It's gonna be a bit, you get that. So make sure you remember that. Make sure you remember that the number of marks tell you how many forces are acting. Now let's talk about simultaneous equation. People claim to know how to do simultaneous equation until it comes to paper one. Typically acceleration or tension, they will ask you to calculate it and you would require a simultaneous equation. Go back. I want you to listen to this video and remember me when you finish writing. Go back to your grade 11 physics notes. There are things there you can't find in grade 12 notes. Go online and find them now. See that new statistics, uh, static friction? Go back. The coefficient? Go back. Go back. This is the last time you're writing physics. Awesome. So, make sure that your diagram is okay. Simultaneous equation, think of the forces and the directions. Your, but your free body diagram will guide that. Okay? And then also think about your answer. Does it make sense? 
does it make sense if I'm pulling a box for the acceleration to be 500 meters per second? Does it? No. It doesn't make sense. It's like now I'm flying with a box. You get that? <clears throat> that is with regards to Newton's. Now, another thing that learners tend to make is not look at the grade 10 and 11 electricity and electrodynamics concepts. As a result, they tend to do very poor. Because remember, physics is a subject that assesses you on some of the topics you did in grade 10 and 11, such as electricity. Another one, the enemy of them all, graph interpretation. Especially when it comes to vectors, uh, um, that is one topic where learners tend to struggle with visualizing the scenario when they are given a graph. Go and practice at least two graphs, a velocity time graph, try and practice them, and also know how to plot one if you are given a scenario. Very, very important. Also, common mistakes. Not choosing the correct formula from the data sheet. Leaving out subscripts where necessary. And units. If we are calculating acceleration, if you listened, what's the unit for acceleration? And what's the unit for velocity? I can't hear you. You tell me now. Guys, I need to do my hair. Oh, not rounding off correctly. I spoke about this in maths. Also leaving out your answers as fractions. If your calculator gives you 71 over 208, you don't give me that. I need the answer in two decimal places. Or also get a zero. Get that? Another one, a big one, which is why examiners are doing what they're doing now. Learners heavily rely on past papers for studying. And that is what you can see the examiners are trying to prove. That doing past papers is not going to help. You need to study. Do you remember that simultaneous for paper one, the word problem? They are moving away from that. Because they saw that people see the NSC as predictable, which affects the quality of the performance. And it also affects how we look on an international scale. So they are switching things up, and I'm all for that. Okay, so learners should really focus more on the understanding. So let's get into these things where I'm going to be giving you very important tips that we need to know for this topic. Okay, we spoke about Newton's. I don't know why it has so many notes. For example, when it comes to equations of motions and vertical motion, an equation of motion applies to interval where either the movement is only upwards or only downwards or both back up and down and tips for you when you're doing this topic is that be consistent in terms of the direction you're taking you can't say you're taking right as positive and then suddenly you are changing no you stick to one and then also list the variables that is something that used to help me when this topic used to throw hands write down what you're given Acceleration, question mark. Time, we have this. But also think logically. If they tell you it went up and down at the same speed, maybe and then they tell you took 12 seconds, how long did it take to go up? Think about these things. And then solve for the variable that you don't have. Then you identify the formula to see which one has the variable I need. You get that? Very, very important. So write them on the sides and then start finding a formula. Very, very important. Choose a direction. If we are saying upwards is positive, remember, gravity, your pants, goes down. So it means your acceleration is going to be negative. You idiots get it. If we choose upwards as negative, that means that gravity is going to be positive. You get that. And if you are asked to draw an acceleration and time graph, jui, they will never ask you that because it's just a straight line. And then a velocity and time graph, if something is thrown up and then it comes down, it's going to look more like a parabola. What do you call it? Quadratic? Not, yeah, that graph. You know, the smiley graph, the angry graph, but it's going to be angry. It's a quad. 
very important. Okay, so the direction you take is very important. If you are asked to draw a velocity time graph for a bouncing ball, remember a ball is gonna bounce and then it gets motion again. Another tip, another tip. If there's something, something that is at the rest, what does that tell us about the initial velocity? Exactly, it is zero, very much zero. So make sure you understand that. If you see a graph in your exam, there's a line and then there's like a space and then there's another line. That means that that thing most likely might be bouncing. Do you get me? Are we together? Please make sure you don't predict definitions. Ask last year's matriculants and they will tell you. Don't predict those things at all because you're going to go through it. Collision. Please make sure you know elastic and inelastic. What's the difference between the two? Besties, in this topic, the most important thing I will tell you is that make sure you write down the values of what you have and what you don't have. Conservative versus non-conservative uh, um, work forces very very important if something is an elastic collision what does that mean in terms of physics principles when you calculate what are you supposed to observe doppler effect you need to get full marks but don't take advantage of this topic they can ask you simultaneous questions as well from here make sure you know how to and you must know this is a topic you need to do well in is the stars moving towards or away from you that's something you need to know and remember, they can ask you Doppler in the form of a table. Very important for you to understand. And besties, don't panic. Coulomb's laws, do not panic. Always write down the things you have. And remember that in physics, there is positive marking. Good luck. I'll try and cover some of these later on TikTok, but I got to go. Bye.